100 terabyte hard drives? That's right. Get ready for a massive increase in size of spinning disk platter drives from Seagate on this episode of Warning 56K. In a recent earnings call from Seagate's CFO, there was a mention of the latest updates to their hard drive roadmap, embracing what they call heat-assisted magnetic recording, or hammer technology, being used in their upcoming high-capacity hard drives. Back in 2018, Seagate announced that it used its hammer technology to build the world's first 16-terabyte enterprise hard drive in a standard 3.5-inch form factor, the largest capacity hard drive ever produced. Those were for internal testing only, but that shows how long Seagate has been investing in hammer technology, with the super-secret squirrel engineering going back to earlier than that. The company is starting its large-capacity hammer journey with a massive 32-terabyte drive, with a 50-terabyte version already in the works in their labs. While Seagate didn't provide an exact timeline for consumer availability, the end of this past April, they begun shipping 30-terabyte hammer samples to select cloud customers. According to the CFO, Seagate's hammer business is growing faster than anticipated. Although it won't have a significant impact on the company's profit and loss sheets for a few quarters, the progress is still impressive. The first larger capacity hammer drives will feature a 10 platter design, offering a whopping 32 terabytes of storage with 20 read write heads, meaning 3.2 terabytes per disk. Following this, Seagate has plans for a 36 terabyte version and eventually a massive 40 terabyte variant, all using the same 10 platter design. There's currently even a 50 terabyte version currently being developed in their labs, but we may have to wait at least a year, if not more, for its release. Back in 2021, during an analyst meeting, Seagate's SVP of marketing stated, with hammer technology, it allows us to jump in steps of four terabytes, six terabytes, or even 10 terabytes at a time. Going on to say, With the aerial density of CAGR technology just introduced, we have a path to 10 terabytes per disk by 2030. This then represents our outlook for technology limits over the next 10 to 15 years. What does that put their future drive capacity at? Well, with 10 terabytes per platter and current high capacity hammer drives being designed around a 10 platter setup, that means 100 terabytes per three and a half inch drive. Add in a couple more platters and a possibly slightly larger form factor, and that takes it up to 120 terabytes per drive. So what does the timeline look like for Hammer? With the 30 terabyte testing units now being shipped out, that puts the 40 terabyte units between 2024 and 2025, with the 50 plus terabyte units and even 100 terabyte units somewhere around 2026. But what about Seagate's current drives using Perpendicular Magnetic Recording, or PMR? Well, according to the CFO, they will reach their maximum capacity of about 24 terabytes, which will be hitting the market soon. Beyond that, Seagate will adopt shingled magnetic recording, or SMR, for 28 terabyte drives, and then Hammer for 30 terabyte and beyond. The CFO also mentioned which customers will require specific capacities. Cloud storage providers are the ones in need of the massive 40 terabyte drives, while enterprise OEMs will opt for the slightly smaller 30 terabyte options. For video and image enthusiasts, around 20 terabytes of storage per drive should suffice, but depending upon resolution and bitrate, you may need more. For the rest of us, we'll be able to enjoy the benefits of future lower capacity drives, which will be larger than the current large capacity drives. One notable point made was the profitability of Hammer drives. Unlike PMR drives that require adding more disks for capacity, Hammer drives achieve increased capacity solely through aerial density improvements. That design advantage allows Seagate to use the same 10 platter configuration for 32 terabyte, 36 terabyte, and 40 terabyte drives, resulting in cost savings that can be passed on to customers. However, it's worth noting that these drives will still be relatively expensive and may take several years before we see affordable versions for typical consumers. Well, that's all the information for now. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for an upcoming video going over SMR and CMR drives and why you may want to avoid one type over the other for certain situations, specifically using ZFS file system. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.